Okay, so di-discuss natin yung profits eh, sa sa atin pong module. Okay? So pag sinabi po nating profits, okay, pag sinabi nating profits, it it, uh, it is fourth sa atin po sa biblical belief natin. It, it, they are fourth tellers. They're they're about to tell to us what is bound to happen. Ang kakaiba niyan sa hula, okay, yung hula kasi yung di ba, sabi nila yung mga propeta ngayon nanguhula. Ah, uh, maraming mga propeta ngayon nanguhula pero hindi naman uh, base sa katotohanan yung kanilang iniuhula, no? Uh, I, I remember if I not remember sir, it right one candidate, presidential candidate, uh, merong prophet na humula sa kanya that you will win. But he never won, no? So Isang bagay na gusto kong maintindihan ninyo when it comes to prophet, ang propeta ng Diyos kapag humula, hindi yun mababago. Okay? Kasi ang Diyos ang nagbigay nun sa kanya eh. Kapag inihul, binigay ng Diyos ang dapat niyang sabihin at ihula sa kanyang bayan, hindi yun mababago. Yun ay uh, bound to happen. Kakaiba do sa mga uh, manguhula sa ating panahon ngayon, na mayroong bagay na nababago yung hula nila. Sasabi nila kasi nagbago ang isip ng Panginoon kaya hindi mo nila ginawa. Mali yon. Kasi po, ang hula ng Diyos, kasi itong mga prophets na nagsulat sa Bible, yung mga propeta ng Panginoon, hindi lang sila merely ng hula na inisip nila ito mangyayari 10 years before or 10 years uh, after. Ito po ay salita ng Panginoon. What they have told to Israel what they have told to the people of God are the very word of God. Kaya lang, kaya lang, ito yung kaya lang, yung kanilang sinasabi ay bagay na mangyayari sa hinaharap. Hindi siya mangyayari bukas lamang. O hindi siya mangyayari ngayon. Mangyayari siya sa hinaharap. hinaharap. Uh, one thing na gusto kong ma-appreciate niyo when it comes to profit, actually, from the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, there is a messianic prophecy. In Genesis 3.15, it is also a messianic prophecy. But we are, what we are going to discuss is the, the prophets, the writing prophets that uh, the Bible has. Okay, from Isaiah to Malachi. We will not discuss every book, but we will discuss some structure of the prophetic book. Okay, again, uh, May nagtanong kanina, bakit yung sa sum, yung number one at two lang yung may structure? Yung sa dulo, wala. Because I want you to practice, how would you structure a certain passage, a certain genre, a certain literature of the scripture? I want you to practice practice yourself how to structure it. Okay, but now sa prophets, nakikita natin, ano ba yung structure ng prophets? Okay? So, makikita natin dito, fourth teller versus fourth teller. Magkaiba yon. Fourth teller, the prophets, the writing prophets of the scripture, is giving this Israel the very word of God that is bound to happen in the future. Yung fourth teller, yung mga manguhula natin ngayon, hindi nila alam kung tal hindi sila tiyak. Walang katiyakan din kung mangyayari ito. Basta sinasabi nila lang nila, hula nila. Kaya di ba sinasabi ng ibang mga hula, pwede mo namang mabago yun eh. Sa Panginoon, hindi na natin pwedeng mabago kung ano ang inihula ng Diyos sa Israel. Pwede niyang iprolong yon, but that is bound to happen. One good example, Ninive. Familiar kayo sa Ninive, di ba? Sinong dalawang profeta ang nagsulat para sa Ninive? Ang isa ay si Jonah, ang isa ay si Nahum. Si Jonah, ang isinulat niya para sa Ninibid, ang nag-preach siya ng gospel, ng message ng Panginoon, maraming Ninivites ang nasave. Pagdating kay Nahum, si Nahum ang preach niya yung doomsday ng prophet. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ah, uh, Hindi siya yung yung tinatawag nating foretelling, ito yung pagsasabi ng mga propeta kung ano yung bound to happen. 
Kasi ni-invite kahit na save ang marami sa panahon ni Jonah, sa panahon ni Nahum, God already judged the Ninevites. Okay? Ngayon, meron tayong tinatawag dalawang uri ng prophet. The action prophet and the writing prophet. Si Elijah is a prophet. Okay? Elijah is a prophet. Elisha is a prophet. Nathan is a prophet. Even Ahitophel is a bad prophet. Samuel is also a prophet. Okay? So, si, si Joshua was also considered a prophet. But they never wrote. No? Kaya ang pag-uusapan lang natin, yung mga writing prophet. The major and the minor prophets. Okay? Kasi po, during those times, ng mga writing prophet, those are unique moments sa Israel history. Bakit siya unique? Kasi, after David and Solomon dies, when when Rehoboam takes over, Jeroboam uh, divided the kingdom. Rehoboam uh, napunta sa northern, yung isa nasa, naghati sila eh. So, nagkaroon ng divided kingdom ng Israel. Those are unique because uh, the people of Israel did not foresee that their, that their strong kingdom will be divided although God already foretell to, to them that uh, sabi niya kay David, hindi ko sisirain ang kaharian mo, ibibigay ko yan kay Solomon, pero after Solomon, it would be divided. Okay? So, sa panahon din ng Israel, Dati sila, sa panahon ni David, sila yung kinikilalang strong, stronghold. Sila yung uh, world power. Nobody would love to touch and engage David in a battle. Definitely, talo sila. But during the, the, the time of the divided kingdom, uh, the emerging empires rose up. Andyan ang Babylon, andyan ang Assyria. Two world powers, competing world power na nag-aagawan sa Israel. Oh. Para bigyan ko kayo ng example. History natin. Ang Pilipinas kakarampot. Pero pinag-agawan ng dalawang world power by those time. Spain and Portugal. Parang ganun din yun. Yung Israelita, yung Israel na bansa, napakaliit lang yan eh. Garampot, pinag-aagawan ng Assyria at Babylon. So, magkaibang bansa yan, ha? So, yung Babylon, ang kanilang binihag, yung Kingdom of Judah, yung Assyria, yung Kingdom of Israel, yung Northern Kingdom. The nation was divided, their, poli their politics was divided, ang daming issues sa military, and most of all, spiritually dead ang bansang Israelita sa panahon ng kings. Marami kasi ang mga pasaway na hari. Okay? Maraming pasaway na hari. So ergo, ang tunay na dahilan ng pagkakahati is yung spiritual nature ng Israel. We all know that. Okay? When you read the, the, the book of Kings, the first king and second kings, when you read those, you will read these uh, keywords. Ano yung mga keywords? Kapag good yung king, Maganda yung nakita ng Diyos. And they, they, and they find grace and they find blessing sa mata ng Diyos. Pero pag wicked, iba. Okay? So now, during the rise ng king, kahit na, kahit na naghati-hati sila, may hari pa rin sila, ang ginawa ng Diyos, nagtatayo siya ng propeta. Para mag maging tinatawag nating covenant enforcer. So yung mga prophet, they are going to expose and tell to the Israel, Israelite the covenant of the Lord, then they will enforce. Okay? Ang basis ng ito is yung law. No? Kaya ang basis ng Panginoon sa bansang Israel, when they obey the law of the Lord, they will be blessed. When they disobey the word of the Lord, the law of the Lord, they will be cursed. So sa, sa mundo ng prophets, sa mga writings ng prophet, makikita nyo ito yung mga sitwasyon na ito. Yung blessing ng faithfulness, 
magandang kalusugan, buhay, prosperity, safety, at sa kaiba naman, yung curse, yung death, destruction, deportation, and disgrace. Makikita niyo yan. Sa anong basis, itong mga passages na binigay ko sa inyo, yaan ang basis ng mga profeta when to curse the Israelite and when to bless the Israelite. Yan ang basis ni Lord. Okay? So, kung makikita ninyo, ayan. A little bit of structure yan. So, titignan niyo yung prophets. Titignan niyo yung prophets kung sila ay uh, taang king sila. Kung yung maingay, paki si Jeff. Yan. Titignan niyo yung, key, yung prophet kung saan sila naka-under na hari. Bakit yung prophet sa speak ng blessing? Kasi baka yung king na sumakot doon sa panahon na yon ay uh, mabuti. So ang pagkakaiba ng prophets ng major and minor prophets, yung major prophet, it speak of the time frame. Mahaba yung kanilang time frame na nag sila. Whereas, yung mga minor prophet, meron silang specific short period of time that they would prophesy. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, dahil minor lang sila, minor lang yung doctrine yun. Hindi ganun yun. Hindi porkit major, ay doon ako magbabasa kasi major prophet. So no. It's just because of the time frame. But both of them enforce the covenant na binibigay ng Panginoon. Okay. In his book, Abraham has shell what manner of man is the prophet. Tignan nyo ito yung character ng prophet. Sensitivity to evil. So ang propeta ng Panginoon, sensitive yan sa gawa ng masama. Society accommodates sin and become callous. No? Medyo sensitive siya dyan. Pagating sa societal change. Kaya makikita nyo sa prophets kung kayo po ay engage sa reading ng social justice. Meron ba sa inyo na nahihilig sa binabasa ay about social justice? Kapag na, nagkaroon kayo ng social justice inclination, basahin nyo yung prophets, how the prophets was uh, sensitive to evil when his society accommodates sin and became callous. The prophets sensitize the people to their true spiritual strength. So, dahil ang prophet ay sensitibo sa kasalanan, he also sensitize the people. Meaning of sensitize, he will encourage the people of Israel to be sensitive also to the sin. Okay, yun yung problema kasi ng Israelita. During this time, Uh, taken for granted the word of God, they are now losing the sight of their true spiritual state. Kaya, may problema. Kaya nagtatayo ang Diyos ng prophet because he wants his people to be sensitive to the spiritual state. O, tingnan nyo to. Ito, hindi writing prophet. Elijah. Si Elijah, he rallies the people of uh, Judah, Israel na maging sensitibo sa ginagawa ni Haring Ahab at ni Queen Jezebel laban sa nalabag sa kalooban at sa salita ng Panginoon. Lagi niya sinasabi yan. So, so si Elijah, he always rebuking Ahab. Kasi nga, sensitive siya. Kaya pag ang propeta ay hindi sensitive sa kasalanan, propeta kaya siya. Okay? Baka hindi. Then, a prophet is confrontative. He always confront. Tingnan nyo si lahat yan, from Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, Daniel, Hosea, di ba? Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, lahat yan, they confront. Bakit? Kasi sa society nila, Uh, lalo sa panahon ni Hosea, 
sa panahon ng mga prophets, yung mga superficial religion, yung mga Eastern mysticism, yung pagsamba sa Diyos-Diyosan, yung idolatry, was uh, rampant in their time. Okay? Rampant yan. Kaya sa panahon nila, lagi ang issue idolatry. Kaya gusto ko, tignan ninyo, i-investigate nyo yung mga, pra, yung mga libro ng prophets. Basahin nyo siya pan, uh, kahit hindi tayo aab, di naman tayo aabot na tapusin siya. Pero I hope matapos nyo siya kasi meron kayong major and minor prophet this year. Those religions was the enemy of God. And the prophet uh, confront them. Then, hindi lang yung idolatry. Makakala natin, idolatry lang ang kinoconfront ng mga prophet. They also confront the materialism uh, uh, character ng mga Israelita. Kasi yung mga Israelita, masyado nang mapagmahal sa pera. Kaya, ang, gusto, ang ginagawa ng mga propeta ay kinoconfront yung mga Uh, tinatawag ito, kinoconfront nila yung mga tao in terms of their attitude toward wealth, power, and wisdom ng mundo. Kasi, ang Israelit, yung mga Diyos-Diyosan, doon sa mga ibang hari, sa mga hari, sa mga, sa mga pagano. Pero pagdating sa Israelita, ang kinoconfront nila, hindi lang yung pagiging pa, pa, palasamba sa Diyos-Diyosan maging yung paniniwala nila sa iba't ibang wisdom ng mundo. Kaya nga, ano eh, kaya tayo, alam nyo, purpose ba tayo na hermeneutics? Hindi lamang para makapasa sa BBCA. Pero kailangan natin matest yung lahat ng mga preachers ngayon. Are they preaching biblical? Bakit? Kasi maraming sikat ngayon Baluktot naman ang doktrina. Abay, may malat mga mo, merong isang pastor, nagpipreach. Si Jesus daw ay nagtransform lang ng Holy Spirit. And that is dichotomous view of, Jesus, of, of the DT. Hindi yung Trinitarian view. Kasi we know that the Trinitarian view of the of Theos is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all in one but distinct personality. They do not transform. Pero may pastor ngayon, nangangaral. Ang taas-taas ng church niya, naka-elevate. Oh, hindi na ako magsasabi kung sinong pangalan nun. Ha? Pero naka-elevate yung church niya. And then he is preaching uh, dualism. Well, that is a problem. When people are, are not attuned to hermeneutics, attuned to the scripture, many are gonna be deceived. Kaya nga sabi ko doon sa post eh, ano sabi ko sa post, di bali hindi sikat, basta biblical. Kasi yung mga sumisikat sa US na mga preachers, puro mga, halos ah, hindi lahat, halos puro mga prosperity gospel na lang eh. Yun yung gustong i-confront ng prophet. Pastor, wala lang prophet ngayon, di ba? Wala na. I believe that the, the office of the prophets already ceased. No? Pagdating sa, sa pneumatology natin, pag-aaralan natin yan. Pero, bakit, anong yung prophet kasi sa New Testament age was simply the work of the pastor. Not, no longer an office, but the work of the pastor to prophesy. Kaya ang sabi ni Paul, di ba, despise not the prophesying, preaching yun. Okay? So yung prophet ngayon sa New Testament is more on preaching. More of the gift of preaching rather than the office of a prophet. So the prophet during the, the Old Testament time, they are confronting every issues. Okay? Especially pertaining to the spiritual state of the, the nation. Kaya nga, eh, pasod ba yung materialism? Materialism has to do with the spiritual state the power, the wisdom of the world, any religion that is against the will of God, against the teaching of the, the Torah, was a major issue. So, hindi lamang siya issue na basta-basta. Uh, so, that, that the prophet confront. Okay? And then, 
the prophet also experienced the burden. Kaya, bakit ito si Elijah? Kahit to the point of papatayin siya, he has to speak, he has to confront Jezebel. Although the, at the latter end of his life, medyo na-discourage siya kasi sabi niya, ako na lang ang mag-isang propeta. Hindi niya nalalaman na meron pang uh, itinago si Nehemiah. But the burden to preach, the burden to rebuke, the burden to confront is there. Even to the point of getting martyred. Remember, uh, si Daniel, si uh, Meshach, si Shadrach, at si Abednego. Even to the point of death, they rebuke King Nebuchadnezzar. Kasi may burden eh. Para sa pagpapastor lang. Sa pagpapastor, may burden tayo mag-preach. Walang pastor na hindi na, na tinawag ng Panginoon na walang, walang gustong mangaral. Kaya lang, kailangan tama. So yung mga propeta, nagmamartyr sila. Nagiging martyr. Okay? Then, ang magiging prophet is, is not selective. Hindi yan katulad ng priest na Levite lang ang pwedeng maging priest. Sa pagiging prophet, iba-iba ng uh, walks of life. Isaiah, politiko. Jeremiah, lahi ng mga uh, saserdote. Si Daniel, yunok. Sabihin, politiko rin siya. Si Hosea, may asawang patutot. Si, jo si Jonah, matigas ang ulo. Iba-iba yan eh. May royalty, may priest. Pero ang principle, kaya pumipili ang Diyos ng prophet because while many are guilty, all are responsible. And the prophets represent those people who are responsible for their sin. Thus, the prophet leads to hell. Kaya marami tayong propeta kasi nakita nyo ba't ang daming prophet? Kasi sa haba ng panahon ng Israel ay masakit sa ulo ng Diyos. Okay? The prophet speaks for God. O, ang pagkakaiba ng prophet sa priest, the prophet represent God to men, the priest represent men to God. O, baligtaran niya eh. Kaya hindi pwedeng mawala, hindi pwedeng priest lang ang meron ng bansang Israel. Kailangan nila ng prophet. The reason bakit Moses and Aaron. Aaron would be the priest, Moses would be the prophet. Okay? Yun ang calling niya. So, the prophet represent God to men to ano sinasabi ng Diyos para sa tao. The prophet will tell. The priest kung anong hinaing ng tao sa Diyos, sasabihin ng priest sa Diyos. He will represent man to God. Okay? So yung pagiging propeta ng mga tao sa Old Testament, they are called. Kaya nga ang keyword palagi sa book of prophet ay ito. Thus saith the Lord. Hindi sila nagsasalita ng hindi galing sa Diyos. Okay? Kaya kung uhula lang yung ibang tao na mananalo yung isang kandidatong pastor na hindi naman yung galing sa Diyos at dahil wala sa Bible, wala sinabing, Thus say the Lord. Hindi pa pwedeng magkatotoo yun. Okay? Kasi may certain thing, karakteristik yung hula. Hindi pa pwedeng walang purpose yung hula. Halimbawa, kung totoo mang propeta yun ng hula doon sa kandidatong pastor na siya ay mananalo dalawang beses, bakit noong una pa lang hindi na siya pinananalo? Hindi siya nanalo. Eh, kailanman, hindi magkakamali ang Diyos. Naniniwala naman siguro kayong hindi nagkakamali ang Diyos. So kapag ang Diyos nang hula, hindi siya magkakamali. Eh bakit may may re, ano? Merong pagbabago kasi nagrecant eh. Ang sabi ng propetang 'yon, ah, hindi pa panahon. Hindi ang Diyos ang nagtakda kung hula ng Diyos 'yon. 
Saka dapat yung hinihula ng yun ng propeta, idagdag na sa Bible. Bakit? Kasi bawat sinabi ng propeta ng Diyos, salita yun ng Diyos. Kaya kung ta naniniwala tayo na kompleto na ang Bible, if we believe that the 66 canonized book is complete and authoritative, hindi na tayo magpapaniwala doon sa mga propeta na nagkalat sa ngayon. Now, those prophets live in horror and hope. Yung mga propeta na yan, marami sa kanila pinatay. Nakita nyo naman siguro istorya ni Jeremiah, nagtago pa sa sa ano, anuhan ng dumi ng tao. Huwag lang siyang mapatay. Nakita nyo naman siguro si Daniel. Di ba? Anong ginawa kay Daniel? nilagay sa den, lions din. Tinulak yun, ha? Pero may pag-asa. So, yun ay background lamang. Now, tingnan natin ang structure. Kasi crucial ito as we understand the prophetic text. When you read a, pro a particular text from the prophetic books, you have to investigate the historical situation and call of the prophet. So, yung historical context pa rin ay napakahalaga. Okay? Kasi doon bubuo tayo, doon sa narratives natin, nalala niyo yung narratives, di ba? Ilang bilog ang narrative? Isang bilog? Ilang hati? Dalawa. Tama? Ano yung nasa ibabaw? Historical. Ang nasa ilalim, Theological content. So meaning, we are go even a prophetic book. We have to theologize. Tama? And upon our theologizing, we have to consider in our historical, grammatical interpretation of the text. We have to consider the historical context of the prophetic books being read. Ano yung mga titignan ninyo? Anong pangalan? At ano ang lahi? O. Oh. Diba? Isaiah. Jeremiah. Joel. Lahat yon may mga ibig sabihin ng pangalan. So, tignan mo. Kasi, yun din yung konteksto nila. Jeremiah was a, from a family of a priest. Kaya nga lagi siyang naglalamin. Ikaita ka? Bakit si Jeremiah lagi naglalamin? Hindi lang dahil nakakaiyak yung sitwasyon because he, kahit na siya ay prophet, prophet, he still represent man to God. He in, Jeremiah always intercede for the people of God. And then the time of ministry in terms of the kingdom they represent. No? So, ano, kailan sila? Anong panahon? Then, ano yung mensahe ng prophet against background of military opposition? No? May chart sa baba. Now, in the prophet side, you will look for this. Oracle. Okay? Sa so, sa theology, uh, sa theological narrative, apat yung hinahanap natin, di ba? Ngayon, dito sa prophet, isa lang. The oracle. Okay? The oracle ay, uh, is the main structural unit of prophetic writing. So, iisa yan. Hindi yan katulad ng sum, ang daming structure. Hindi yan katulad ng narrative, ang dami mong hahanapin. Pero, I mind you, huwag kayo malito, yung principle natin sa theological narrative ay still applicable in terms of determining the full oracle of the prophetic books. So, huwag kayong malilito. Pag hinanap po sa inyo ang buong oracle, ang buong theology ng prophet, sa narrative, magkakonsider pa rin kayo. 
Okay, ayan yung ano? Structure, word, vision, dream. Okay? So, the oftenly, the often high, highly symbolic imagery in prophecy is the central difficulty in interpretation. Most often, marami sa kanila ay self-interpreting. Sina naginip? Di ba? Remember, there is some, some instances sa Daniel book wherein a prophecy was written on the wall. Mene, mene, tekel, afarsin. The writing is on the wall. Paano distribute yung this interpretation? No? Paano, paano ni-interpret ni Daniel? Binasa lang niya. Kasi yung imagery ng prophecy Minsan, ano yan, madalas pala, I often self-interpreting. All you need to do is to recognize oracle. Okay? At yan, may strat meron akong technique na nilagay dyan. May mga contextual, text ay common textual clues. Yan. Ano yung mga textual clues? Nagpalit ng audience. Okay? Siguro naman, tapos sa tayo sa... Old Testament and New Testament survey, once we said, audience, para kanina sinulat yung aklat. Nag-change yung time, yung situation. O, tingnan nyo yung mga formula. Lagi yung mayroon kayo makikita ang introduction formula. Thus says the Lord, then the Lord said, the word of the Lord came, hear the word of the Lord. Lagi yan. Okay? Hindi yan nawawala. Huwag nyo aalising basahin yon. Hahanapin nyo yan. Bakit? The introduction formula was so important because it will legitimize your claim that the prophet declaration of the word of God is based on the word of God. So, kailangan makita ninyo. At lahat naman niya, makikita niya, the set the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Okay? Yung introduction, it legitimizes the authority of the prophet himself. So, hindi tayo matatakot basahin ng Isaiah because the set the Lord. And hear the word of the Lord. It was rampant in that book. Hindi tayo matatakot basahin si, si Joel. O si Nahum, because it was mentioned there, the word of the Lord came. O kaya ako ngayon pinahahanap sa inyo yung introduction formula because it legitimizes the claim of the prophet who wrote the book. Hindi siya fly by night. Okay? Hindi fly by night, but it is a legitimate uh, prophet. Now, how do the, organ the oracles organize? Chronological ba o thematic? Oh, makinig. Makinig mabuti. Ang prophet's book ay hindi yan nako-organize ng sunod-sunod na panahon. Usually, it is thematic. Hindi yan katulad ng narrative. Ang narrative yan ay sunod-sunod. Kaya nga narrative. Pero, pagkakaiba kasi ng dimension yan, eh, that time frame. Malibawa, Isaiah. Okay? Uh, Isaiah was written by three Isaiah. Attributed to the first Isaiah who wrote chapter 1 to 10, I think. But the second Isaiah was Divided. Kasi tatlo yan eh. 66 chapters ang Isaiah. It was divided into three. Hati-hati yun. Okay? So usually thematic yan. But at many times, chronological din. Ano ba? Isaiah, sunod-sunod yun. Pero yung iba, minsan thematic siya talaga. Jonah, sunod-sunod din siya. Roughly chronological. So when I say roughly, Ibig sabihin, merong portion doon na chronological, may portion na hindi. 
So, paano siya inorganize? Halimbawa, yung Book of Amos. The Call of the Prophet. Tinawag si, uh, si Amos. God denounced the country, Israel. He enumerate the offenses. The offenses. Saan based? Sa Leviticus. So, don't get strong. Kapag nagbabasa kayo ng ng prophet, bakit kinundem ni Lord ang Israel? Anong violation? You will refer to the Torah. Okay? So, babasahin nyo rin ulit ang Leviticus. Kaya dapat founded kayo sa Pentateuch. Kabisado ninyo ang Torah. Bakit? Kasi yan ang basis ng Diyos ng judgment sa Israel. Yang Torah. Kasi constitution nila yan eh. And since that is a constitution, it was the basis of God because they are at least still a theocratic country although they have kings. Mahalaga makita ninyo yung saan basis. Okay. Ano ang basis? Sa Leviticus, sa Deuteronomy, kasi yun yung mga nagsasaad ng Batas. So after you see the first two chapters, usually first chapter itong on the first part ng oracle. First chapter yun yung call, yung denunciation at set of offense. First, first chapter, first two chapter, and there the judgment will come. What God will do based on the violation of Torah. So nakita ninyo, the Lord will not judge the, the people of Israel based on His own emotion. Hindi. Remember, God is a, is a great advocate. And since He is an advocate, He will never use His, his emotion ju to judge the people of Israel. He will always base it to the writings. Since by that time, The only writing that is given is the Torah, so God will base the judgment to people based on Torah. Kaya nga sabi ni Jesus, masama bang magjudge? Matthew seven one, masama bang magjudge? Sabi ng Bible, judge not, for be ye not judge. Is it the right context of it? Did the Lord prohibit us to to have a sound judgment? Remember, the same God issues a sound judgment based on Torah. So, kung tayo ay magjudge based on emotion, may malit tayo. But if we are going to judge based on the Scripture, Well, with if ever and whenever we are guided by the scripture, we will never go wrong. Basta tama hermeneutics. Problema kasi, hindi ka na nagbasa, hindi ka pa nag-aral na hermeneutics, tapos kung maka, makaran ka sa FB mo, sa social media mo, kala mo ikaw na pinakamagaling sa Bible. No. So, ang Bible, ang Diyos po, when He judge, He judge it based on the Torah. Note. May note ako dyan. Judgment are conditional depending on their response. Oh, see? One good example is Jonah 4. Meron na kasing unang hula ang Diyos that the people of Nineveh will be destroyed. But if they will repent based on the preaching of Jonah, I will save them. I will spare them from my judgment. So the judgment is conditional based on the response of Israel. And at many times, kung nababasa niyo yung prophet, The prophet summoned the audience to repent. Iba? 
repent, no? And be baptized. O, di ba? O, natawa kayo, no? Repent and be baptized. Di ba si John the, John the Baptist was the last prophet? And he is shouting to the people of Judah by the time from the Jew to the Jew to repent. Because the prophet openly calls them, summon them, repent, 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 repent. Okay? So, yun yung first part. Now, meron din siyang part depending as a response. Pwede yung blessing, pwede yung execution ng promise, or extension of promise. Remember this. Sa prophecy, dalawa yan. May extension at merong execution. Kapag ginawa na ng Diyos yung kanyang pangako, that is execution. But, when the Lord prolong His plan, it is eschatology. Okay? Kaya pag binasa niyo ang prophet, gusto kong tignan ito, it also whether God execute or extend His plan. Okay? Kasi dapat makita niyo yun. Halimbawa, Daniel, Is it execution? May halo yung execution at meron yung halong extension of God's plan. Bakit? Sa Daniel, ay may hula din ba, may babalik. No? Andyan yung lahat-lahat ng pagbabalik. Kaya nga, pag pinag-aralan yung eschatology, pag-aaralan yung Daniel at Revelation. Kaya hindi pa ako nagbaba, hindi pa ako bumabakbak sa Facebook ng ano eh na eschatology. Alam mo bakit? Baka hindi na kayo mag-enroll. Nakapakinig na ako, hindi na ako mag-enroll. Yun din sasabihin ni Pastor Ron eh. Okay? Kasi I have my own analysis of eschatology based on biblical theology. Kaya, hindi tayo dapat banat ng banat na, oh, second coming na. May famine. Yung sumisigaw ng may famine, busog eh. Oh, di ba? May wars. Nanahimik tayo sa bahay, may wars. Kaya hindi dapat natin i-view agad. Sasalain natin. I-filter natin yung iba't ibang view. Ganon din sa pagbabasa ng prophet. Is this promise already executed? If it is executed, that is not for me. But if it is extended, it is still for me. Ay, Pastor, paano naman yung tithes? Eh, sasabihin ko sa inyo, it is not a prophetic. It is a law. Law that supersede Torah. O, ang tithes is a law, yet the tithes supersede Torah. Kasi, that, ah, so precede, Torah. Bakit precede? Nauna kasi yung tithes bagong magkaroon ng Torah. So since that, the, the tithe was uh, first executed, eh, promulgated by Abraham, so hindi yan natitigil. Kasi the Abrahamic promise was still in extension. Bakit? Kasi tuloy pa rin naman ang pagdami ng lahi. Tuloy pa rin naman yung pagdami ng Israelita. Tuloy pa rin naman lahat yung pangakong kaligtasan at pagbabalik ng Panginoon. So yung covenant kay Abraham, still extended. Hindi pa yun tapos. So yung tithes, hindi pa rin tapos. Kaya wag na sa pastor, ang tithes ay para sa mga Hudyo. At ang Israel, ang, ang giving ay para sa mga hintil. Eh parehas lang yun eh. Walang pinag-iba ang tithes and offering. The tithes was a law extended to the church. The giving was an act. Okay? Offering was your appreciation. But both of them are giving. And giving is a part of Christian living. Kaya hindi dapat awawala yung tithes and offering. But it was not prophetic extension. Ah, it was not only by faith by 
ano, for the Israel people, it is still extended to the church. Bakit? Because the church is also part of Abrahamic covenant. Kaya lang, may nag, is, nag-rise kayo na ang teaching nila, ang tithes ay hindi para sa church. Given lang. Oh. Tapos, ang sasabi na, oh, give abundantly. No? Give as it ne- ang ginagamit yung 2 Corinthians. Diba? Give as it purposed in your heart so that he they give. O, eh, ano ba context nun? Meron bang particular giving nun? Wala. Malalaman natin yan sa, ano natin, sa epistle. No? Kung totoo bang nag-exist pa ba ang tithe sa church sa epistle yun. Pero sa prophets, may mga extended promise ang Diyos. And often difficult to determine what is short and what is eschatological. Yan ang mahirap. Kaya dapat, nagbabasa tayo, nagkukomentary tayo, nag, nag, nagsusulat tayo kasi minsan dapat maintindihan natin hindi nakukuha sa isang basa. Kasi yung short bless, short-term blessing ay minsan mahirap ma-determine sa eschatological. Okay? So meron akong binigay na clue para hindi kayo mahirapan. The imagery of blessing is like an imagery of eschatological promise. Kapag ang, prom- ang, ang text ay merong imagery, o, limbawa, branch of Jesse, may anong imagery nun? Si Jesse ba magkakaroon ng branch? Hindi naman puno si Jesse. Yung tatay ni David. Pero sabi doon, the branch of Jesse. So, ibig sabihin, may imagery, meron eschatological ito. And truthfully, that passage that contains the the imagery prof, uh, branch of Jesse is foretelling to us, the readers, that there will be a... a a man out of the descendants of Jesse that will rise and be the king of kings and lord of lords. Okay? So, pag may imagery, eschatological yan. Prophets receives word from God or vision as though they are one event. Okay? Hindi yan magkahiwalay. Magkasama yan. Halimbawa, Joel, Day of the Lord, Holy Spirit outpouring. Okay? That is a blessing and judgment. The same book that Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. Same context, a context. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, makikita nyo rin dyan, dapat ma-determine nyo if it is pre-exilic, exilic, and post-exilic. Bakit po? Kasi magkaiba na ng context si pre-exilic, si exilic, at si post-exilic. Magkakaiba ng konteksto. Paano nag-iba? Pag pre-exilic, malaya pa yung Israel. Matigas lalo ulo. Kaya eh, mas mahirap mag-preach during the pre-exilic. Ayaw maniwala. Sa exilic, naniwala sila, pero pinatigas pa rin ang Diyos, tumigas pa rin ang kanilang puso. Sa post-exilic, medyo masaya na. Kaya lang, meron ding mga issue. Bakit? Halimbawa, uh, Sepanaya, Habakkuk, uh, ha- Habakkuk, Hagay, Sepanaya, mga post-exilic yan eh. Ano issue nila? Hindi eh, yung templo. Walang gustong magtayo eh. Kaya sabi ni Hagay, kayo mga Israelita, nakuha nyo itayo ang inyong bahay sa magandang pamamaraan, magandang mga materyales. Pero yung bahay ng Diyos, ayaw nyo itayo, kinalimutan nyo. Yun ang issue nila sa Hagay. Sa Zechariah, ganun din. Okay? So now, 
Okay. May nakikita kayong structure yan, assignment, di ba? Punta nga kayo sa unahan nito, dito sa pinakauna ng inyong module. Di ba? Para hindi kayo nahihirapan kasi ayoko nahihirapan kayo na tanong ng tanong ng assignment. Submission pa naman sa March. Oh, biro nyo sa March pa. Bibigyan ko kayo ng sapat at panahon. Nakikita nyo to. Ayan. Per week, meron niyang mga assignment. Ayan. Tulad niyan, sa prophetic literature, ang assignment, provide the structural outline of Hosea. O, oh, ayan. Lahat po ng mga assignment na to, isasubmit sa March. Sa March, ha? Hindi sa next month. Sa March pa, ate. Na, natatakot na si ate Florence, eh. Nakagano'n na. Sa March pa. So, ibig sabihin, kasi gusto kong maganda yung structure nyo. So, aral na aral na kayo niyan. Okay? Now, yung natapos natin ngayon, prophets, structure yan. Okay? So, meron na lang tayong dalawa. Gospel and epistle. Dalawa na yan. E, pasuri yung revelation. Ganon din yan. Walang pinag-iba ang revelation. Walang pinag-iba ang revelation sa prophetic. Dapat yung maunawaan yun. Hindi yan nagkakaiba. Kaya, gusto kong maintindihan ninyo yun. Now, Question. Okay? Are there any question? I-type na muna ang tanong para sasagutin natin. Type lang po kayo ng tanong. Baka may question kayo. Yan. Baka Ate Marilyn, may question? May, type lang po tayo ng tanong. Question and answer tayo. Sasagutin ko yung tanong ngayon. Kasi matagal pa. Ma mahaba pa naman yung oras eh. May question kayo about prophet or anything that has to do with prophecy. Or anything that has to do with prophecy in line of our appreciating the prophetic text or prophetic literature. So gusto ko, pag nagtanong kayo, yung may kinalaman sa prophetic literature. Okay? Okay? 